Today we're going to the book of Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20 to verse 27. And today the sermon topic is the instructions to a holy life. So in the book of Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20 to verse 27. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and health to a man's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth, keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead, fix your gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet, and take only ways that are firm. Do not sway to the right or the left keep your foot from evil. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this time. And thank you for this passage to teach us how to live or train to have a holy life, just like what Joseph did in the book of Genesis. So Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So as you're all well aware, we already ended chapters 47 of the book of Genesis in which it basically already conclude why the Israelites would be in the land of Egypt instead of staying in the land of Canaan, started with uh, Abraham and then Isaac and then Jacob. And we all see that, you know, the Israelites are very well settled down in the land, in the land of Egypt in the place called Goshen. And, you know, it practically laid out, you know, the foundation of the book of Exodus later on. But then, if we look back to the life of Joseph, one thing I believe most of the Christians were very well aware of, and at the same time find it very difficult to do, is to how to live like Joseph in, um, you know, in the midst of all difficulties and the sufferings, and he still hold on to the way of the Lord. He still hold on to his integrity and everything in front of you know his adversaries and everything. And most Christians find it, hey, it's very difficult to, to, to be like him. You know, is it just like a biblical character, like kind of like a superhero kind of thing that, you know, we can admire, but we simply cannot be, you know, living just like him. And I put in some thoughts to that question. And I believe that, you know, if it is in the word of God, I do believe that God shows no favoritism and whoever did it in the Bible, we, with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the presence of the Lord, we should be able to do the same thing. So don't, you know, overlook the biblical character thinking that they may possess some supernatural power or superhuman power so that they, well, you know, they can do it, but we can. And at the same time, don't underestimate that, you know, we believe in the same Lord. We have the same spirit. We have the same word of God in our lives so that, you know what, I do find that the Bible continue to instruct people who love God, who want to follow Jesus to live a holy life, just like Joseph or just like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you know, King David, King Solomon, and whoever the biblical character that you look up to, you know, including in the New Testament, maybe the Apostle Paul or Peter, you know, or who else, right? Don't overlook the fact that we are all sinners. We have the same God. We have the same word of God. So we should be able to live the same way. And the word of God instruct those who love him to live the same way too, which is the holy way, right? And so today I go to the book of Proverbs to show you that, well, yeah, the Bible did teach us and instruct us how to live a holy life in front of God. And well, this part of the scripture, I do find that, well, it teaches everything that we need to know. Well, in a very condensed way, and that's why we need to break it down somehow so that you would understand what I meant by the Bible instruct us to live a whole. Life. Starting in the book of Proverbs chapter four from verse 20 to verse 23, it says, my son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, 
for they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. So first thing I need you to pay attention to is one thing in uh, both verse 20 and verse 21, and which is you need to pay attention to what you, you have as an input into your life. And practically speaking, when God created us, you know, with everything, you know, as a human being, there are only two ways to receive input from the entire world, including, you know, the word of God as well. And that is from what you see and from what you listen to. And these two ways will be the only two ways for you to receive any new information into your life to, you know, to shape your character and to and to shape your way of life and your lifestyle. Everything comes from what you can listen to and what you can see. And right here, the first thing that uh, I believe is written by King Solomon, okay? King Solomon said, my son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. What it means is that he, the Bible already instructs us to teach us that, hey, there is only two ways. There are only two ways for you to receive information. That is what you see and what you hear. And you need to play, pay close attention to what I am going to say. So he, he told us that you need to pay attention, listen closely, and do not let the word of God out of your sight. So Christian, if you want to live a holy life in front of God, you need to pay attention to what you are going to allow yourself to be inputted into your lives. Are you allowing this world, the news, the politics, the economy, or whatever information or knowledge or wisdom from this world to go into your mind, go into your heart, or will you allow the Word of God to go into your life and let it settle inside your heart? And that would be the first part you need to pay close attention to if you want to live a holy life in front of God. Because if you, if you choose incorrectly, you, your heart, your mind, your character will be shaped by whatever input you allow into your life. And so right here in the book of Proverbs, it already instructs you, it already teaches you that you need to understand what you allow to be in your life, to shape your life, to shape your heart, to shape your mind, characters, and everything. And so here, King Solomon is like a father to a son. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight Keep them within your heart. These will be the first instructions to anyone who wants to live a holy life and follow Jesus. If you continue to allow the worldly wisdom to shape you, you have no relationship to the word of God, then how do you expect yourself to live a holy life in front of God? How do you expect to follow Jesus with the worldly wisdom? And I can tell you straight up ahead that you will not be able to, okay? You can't. You cannot just say that, you know what? There are so many gray areas in the world. There are so many things called like, you know, do a little evil to achieve the greater good. So, you know what? Maybe I should keep that way to follow Jesus. No, you can't. Just look at um, when the time uh, Jesus was being tempted by the devil. The Jesus compromised anything from the word of God just so that, you know, call it like a gray area or, you know, I, I, I do a little bit evil to accomplish the bigger good. You know, no, you simply cannot. You won't see Jesus do that. So why in the world would you think that, well, it's okay for me to do? No, you can't. The only one that you should follow would be your Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever he does, he did, he does, you do. That's the only way. And so if you allow yourself to pay close attention to what the word of God to, has to say in your life, to allow the word of God to shape you, you obey it, you allow it to be your foundation of your life, you would be able to live 
the holy life that the Bible instructs you to do. Why? Because you pay attention to what the Word of God say. And there is a very good reason why you know the Bible, especially in this part, say that pay attention to what I say. There is a very good reason in verse 22. It say, for they are alive to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. So the reason behind the word of God, well, you need to pay close attention to the word of God is because the word of God is the life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. What it says is that, well, that will be the principle of what your life should be dependent on, should be built on. Okay, and that's why if you abide to the biblical principle that you study from the Bible, that you find from the Bible, you would be able to find life itself. And Jesus said it very, very clearly. And that statement, that proclamation is in the book of John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. And that's why if you connect that part of the theology and the biblical teaching towards this part, you would immediately understand why if you pay attention to what the Word of God say, and they would be alive to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. Because practically speaking, if you abide to the Word of God in your life as a foundation of what your life should be like, and you live according to it, well, you already find life itself, and that is Jesus Christ. And upon receiving this new life, well, that practically brings you to peace, and peace will bring you to health. And so, the, all this to say, the first three verses in this part of the book of Proverbs already instruct you the first most basic foundation of how you can you know, continue following God to live a holy life, to live just like what Joseph did when he was alive. And that is, you need to control what your input is into your life. So first challenge unto you is that, will you allow yourself to continue reading all the newspaper, magazine, or entertainment, sports news, or analysis, or economy news into your life and allow those news to shape you how you should live your life or will you allow the word of god to be the perfect foundation in your life so that part of it is your challenge every single day and especially in our time and age because every time you wake up just like okay take me for an example i no longer own an alarm clock my alarm clock is my phone and so Every day, my phone's alarm went off, I check my phone. And what it means by that is that when you check your phone, all the news from the world rush right into your face, whether you want it or not, okay? And so, every single day, you have the challenge of reading the news or reading the Word of God first. So, that would be the challenge every single day. But the Bible already promised you, if you pay close attention to the Word of God, if you do not allow them to be out of your sight, you listen to it closely, you will find life itself. Keep them. Remember what the Word of God say, because what's good about the perfect input when the time you just let it go by your mind and just let it go? It doesn't make any sense, right? And that's why after you choose wisely about your input every single day, you need to keep in mind that you need to remember them. You need to keep them in your heart so that you will not forget it. So that would be the first challenge. And that would be the first step for you to live a holy life in front of God every single day. And then the second part, continue on in verse 23 to verse 25. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth, keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead, fix your gaze directly before you. Okay, 
So after the, the first challenge, and that will be control your input, right? And then in verse 23, it say one very important thing, right? Above all else, above everything, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. And this part you need to pay close attention to, okay? Because what you allow the input to go in, sometimes I gotta say, we're not perfect. Sometimes even I would forget about the, what the Word of God has to say, and I allow myself to be drowned in the pessimistic news or all kinds of philosophy, all kinds of challenging questions regarding to the Bible, regarding to the theology, regarding to salvation, and you know, the list go on and on. And so, since we're not perfect, we may slip once in a while and allow ourselves to be, you know, not in the Word of God, so to say so to speak, okay? But then, this is why it kicks in. Above all else, God your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. So you need to understand that you need to, how to protect yourself, how to guard your heart against everything else. And this proves to be the extremely important part. And when the time you slip, when the time you, you know, forgot the word of God, for once in a while, you know, hopefully that would be the case, okay? You need to understand that everything in your life comes from your heart. What it means is that what you allow the input to go into your life, and that will shape your output. And that process, you know, after receiving the input, and that will stay in your heart. And whatever stays in your heart eventually will, will become the output of your life which in translation, it will be your actions every single day. And that's why it says above all else, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of your life or, or wellspring of life. It's because that part of it is the most important part in your entire life. Everything comes from your heart. Remember when Jesus was being challenged by people saying that, how come your disciples never wash your hand before they eat, right? And then what Jesus say is that what you eat will not uh, pollute your life, so to speak, okay? What you eat will not, because what you eat eventually go to the bathroom and then it just go out from your body. But then uh, what you say it actually comes from your heart and it actually pollutes you, right? You cannot, you know, well, sing praise from the lips when the time the your lips also, you know, say cursed things, you know, it does not make any sense, right? And so that's why guard your heart. That would be the most important part for you to do. And what it means by guarding your heart, not only controlling your input, just like I mentioned, sometimes you may slip, okay? So in that process that you may not receive the perfect input from the Word of God, and, well, that's not the end of it. You need to still guard it by what? Controlling your output. And that's why in verse 24 and verse 25, it says two, I think it's two, yeah, two very important things. Well, actually, sorry, one, prefers corrupt and five. Oh yeah, uh, actually three things, sorry. Uh, so in verse 25, first thing is that put away perversity from your mouth. Okay, that's the first output. Before everything else, okay, the first thing for you to have your output, meaning that you can express your opinion, you can express everything through your mouth. But then according to what uh, the Chinese proverbs or Chinese uh, idioms, well, one thing would be in rough translation, it will say that the cut from the knife will be healed, but the wound from your word will not. Okay, so that's a really rough translation, but I hope you get the meaning. Meaning is that whatever coming out from your mouth, from your word, your word actually pains people a lot more than a sword or a knife can. And that is why when the time the Bible say guard your heart and then immediately it follow up with the first thing, put away perversity from your mouth because 
How many times did you get yourself into trouble because of something that you don't mean to say, but then you slipped out and you said it even you think that it is the most inappropriate thing to say? Well, in my case, in my life, well, I can count several incidents that I can still remember that I wish I never speak or spoke of those words to people. Okay. But then that would be the one practice that we need to practice to control, to guard our heart. Even though sometimes we may not have the perfect input, we still need to guard our output. And that is first thing, put away perversity from your mouth. Always, always remember before you say anything else, think, think whether that is holy, that is good, that is kind, that is the truth before you say it, think about it. If they are not the kind, they are not the truth, they are not coming out from your love, don't say it because it perverts you, okay? So first thing you need to guard your heart with is to control your output from your mouth. And then the second thing will be keep corrupt talk from your lips. Okay, kind of the same thing, but then, well, still, you need to understand that, well, if, if you have to say something, even, you know, you want to make light of the situation by making some jokes or, you know, whatever, please think it through before you say it. Because I cannot tell you how many people that I find get themselves into trouble by saying the most inappropriate jokes at the most inappropriate time and they think that they would be okay, but then, well, look around you. It's not really that okay. And so keep corrupt talk from your lips. Well, speak the truth all the time, okay? Speak the truth all the time, because as we are commanded by God himself, we need to love one another, right? Love one another, how? In the love of God, love one another, meaning that if your brother or sister did something wrong, confront them with truth, grace, mercy, and love. Please don't omit one another. If you only hold on to the truth, but without your love and grace and mercy, well, you are the judge and no one loves you. And they don't feel your love, by the way, because you don't show them a way to repent. You don't show them a way to turn around. But at the same time, don't go just grace mercy all the time. Because why? That would be the corrupt talk. Because you corrupt the love of God. Because in truth, it does not love unrighteousness. And so keep corrupt talk away from you. Because the more you corrupt, well, it also reflect upon what? How corrupt your heart actually is. And if you continue to hold on to that corrupt talk, in your life, it will continue to corrupt your heart and so on and so forth. And you will be in a downward spiral and it will spin out of control. So the second thing will be keep corruption away from your talk. Stop. Seriously, stop. Don't do it. All right. And then the third thing will be in verse 25. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. So this is more likely to be a metaphor. Me metaphor metaphorically uh, sorry <laughs> metaphorically speaking meaning that well you should always set your goals and oh what hold on you should always set your eyes upon the goal and in this case would would be how to live a holy life in front of your god that would be your goal so always set your eyes upon it look straight ahead towards the goal that you set in front of God. Don't, 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 just don't, don't look to the left or look to the right to see what else are there to live a better life for you. Because, well, to be honest, the world will always paint a better picture, a more exciting, a more fun, a more, uh, what's the other word? Uh, okay, more attractive, okay, more exciting more excitement 
from this world. The world will continue to paint that picture for you to distract you away from the word of God. And at the same time, the world will continue to corrupt your viewpoint on how great it is to live a holy life. They would always say, boring, you cannot drink, you cannot gamble, you cannot smoke, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, you cannot, you know, all that they think about the Bible is what you cannot do, okay? And paint a picture of whatever the Bible say that you cannot do, those things will be the, the most fun thing for you to do. Really? Having a Dollar Tree is the funnest or, or funniest thing that you can do? Or not funniest thing, or the most fun thing you can do? No, time and time again, I only see uh, the disgusting picture upon the divorce, upon the uh, you know, realization that a dark tree is a one-way street that you cannot turn around, okay? Uh, or what else? What else did the Bible usually say? Oh yeah, you shall not smoke. And some people, I find it most ridiculous is that some people actually believe that the Ten Commandments, one of them would be, thou shall not smoke. So, uh, I don't know where they get that concept from, but then, you know, the world twisted the Bible to the point that some things are not mentioned by the Bible, but they think that the Bible mentioned them. But anyway, what I'm trying to emphasize is that the world will continue to say, or in general speaking, they will make sins look the most fun thing for you to in your entire life, okay? To be prideful, to be... Um, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go down that list, but let's just say to be prideful would be something that drives you to be successful, uh, you know, things like that. The world will continue to emphasize to you how important those things are and makes, you know, living in the biblical principle to be the most idiotic things for you to do. But then you need to truly understand why this is so important to always set your eyes to look straight ahead unto the goal that you want to achieve in front of God because that is life itself. Without it, I don't know how I'm going to uh, live the life that I have today, such a blessed, such a lovely life to enjoy, to live through, even though, well, even still with suffering and difficulties and to be frank, a lot of difficulties. <laughs> But then I would not trade it. Why? Because I find what is life in me, in my life. What the Bible drives me to, the most blessed place I can ever imagine or beyond my imagination as well. And so, Christians, if you want to live a holy life in front of God, just like Joseph did, just like all the biblical character you admire, this one would be very important. You shall not look at what the world picture what a life should be like because that will always drive you away from God away not closer to God away from God abusing the grace of God abusing the mercy of God abusing the love of God and abuse all the Bible scripture that holds the promise of God they will just abuse it twist it and make it look like they are the dead thing, okay? But then, this is why you need to guard your heart. This is exactly why you need to guard your heart. Controlling your output, set after you set the goal that you want to live a holy life in front of God, don't sway away, okay? Because that is how you find life itself in your life. And so that would be the second challenge. Will you obey to the input that you chose from the first challenge and sometimes even though you may slip once in a while not allow the word of god to be the input or the sole input into your life will you still at that point guard your heart controlling your output and right here talking will be one of them and then set your goal straight ahead focus don't let anything to distract you and that would be the second challenge in how to live a holy life in front of God and then the the final challenge will be in verse 26 and verse 27 it says what make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm do not sway to the right 
or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Okay, so this part will be very, very fun to do. And that is how to live your life. Okay, and right here it says make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. So obviously it's not talking about like a, a you know, a real floor for you to walk on, right? Right here, it means that after you control your input and your output, okay, will you continue to walk on it? Will you? Okay. It say take only ways that are firm. What does that mean? It means that when the time you decide to make the change, are you or, or is your decision that decision that you just made based upon the solid foundation from the promise of God or is from some wish list that you wish that would happen. Okay, that makes all the difference, by the way. All right. Some Christians, I noticed that we want something and force it into the promise of God that we take the Bible out of context and think that that should be it. All right. And that is what we call sugar-coated uh, gospel message. That's what we call, well, that's what I call a Christian buffet, meaning that some verse contains some good thing, then I will take it. And some verses contain some difficulties or something that I need to repent of, which I don't like. And just like a buffet, I just walk by it, never take it, and just go away. All right. So you should not do that. That's the first thing. All right. And then the second thing will be, let me say again, will you make decision based on the promise of God or not? Because the only way that we can make sure our life path will be firm will be upon the rock, upon the promise of God, upon the scriptural promise in your life. Will you just walk on those promise and that's it? All right. And granted, some people will find that, well, pastor, that's a very vague and broad and general instructions, right? You know, how in any way possible that I will be able to apply every perspective of my life upon the word of God? Well, yeah, no one can. But at the same time, everyone who decide to follow Jesus Christ would be able to do so. Well, wouldn't you say that that would be very contradictive? Well, at a glance, it is. But let me break it down for you, all right? The first answer is that no, you cannot, simply because we are still, we, we're still on earth, okay? We still did not escape this sinful body. We still have the sinful nature, meaning that there will be some blind spot in our lives that we are not aware of that is sinning against God, that is not aligned with the Holy Scripture. Well, those parts will be still there. So in life, in every situation possible, I may not be able to abide every single thing unto the Holy Scripture, which is right, right? You can't, no one can, except that if you're Jesus Christ, then uh, maybe. But I think Jesus Christ would not be you. Otherwise, you would be preaching to me, not me preaching to you. <laughs> so that's the first part. And then... Okay, not to discourage you, but then also, theologically speaking, we are walking in faith, not by sight. And only in our faith would we be able to serve God, to live in front of God, because our faith would take us to walk in the Word of God. Meaning that, well, the Holy Spirit is very kind to us. He wouldn't reveal everything that we are not aligning with the Bible at once and force us or, or in hope that we would change like a cold turkey, okay? We cannot escape it, okay? So the Holy Spirit usually would reveal to you one thing at a time. And so you just need to do what? Obey the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to just focus on one thing at a time. And you know what? God counts what you have. God doesn't count what you don't have. So if the Holy Spirit today only convicts you that, 
Hey, you keep lying all the time. You have to stop lying, because why? Well, the scripture already said so. Thou shalt not make false testament. Uh, no, false testimony against your neighbor. Okay, false testimony. All right. So a lying tongue would not be appreciated in the kingdom of heaven. So if the Holy Spirit only convicts you of this one thing, all right, and at the same time you know so well that well my life still have so many other problems other than lying. Well, just focus on stop lying, because why? Well, if the Holy Spirit convicts you to stop lying, then you should just focus on stop lying. Why? Because that's the arrangement of God in your life. And don't forget, God calls you to be obedient unto Him, unto His Word. And of course, His Word include every perspective of your life. But then the Holy Spirit is very kind to you. He just reminds you, convict you one thing at a time. So will you obey the first step unto the Holy Spirit? And of course, this will be you know every uh, how should I put it?、Uh, everyone will have a different、uh, perspective to work on. But what I'm stressing right here is that you need to walk on the path that is firm, and that is only the Word of God can guarantee you that it has a firm path for you to walk on. Other than that, nope, and that's why First Twenty Seven says that you should not, you do not sway to the right or to the left. Keep your foot away from evil. All right, why? Because the evil would always promise you so many promises, don't they? Huh? If you don't trust me, go back to the Book of Genesis, chapter three. Look at what the serpent promised unto the first man and woman. What? Will you receive upon eating the forbidden fruit from the knowledge of good and evil, right? You shall, your eyes shall open, right? You shall be like God, right? Right? Do we? No, we become more stupid after eating the the fruit of the uh you know forbidden tree, right? Our eyes shall open, right? Well. I would say that our eyes are closed right now because we cannot distinguish who is God and who is not, who is God and who is the devil. We have no clue. We always mix that those two together, right? We shall be like God, really, really. We shall be like God. No, I would say that we think that we are God, but we never are, and so we always think that my standard will be the holy standard that everyone in the world should follow. But then the Little did we know that our standard had all sort of problems, right? We will be like God. No, <laughs> we shall know what good and evils are. Really, if that's the case, I would think that the 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 judge or or the law system, the judicial、uh, judicial system, would not be so corrupt today, right? And so, look at what the evil promises from day one, and how many of them actually come true? None. None. On the other hand, whatever God promised us, whatever God said, it was true, and it's still true. The day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Did we die today? Do we eventually die one day? Yes. As bad as that promise, as bad as that truth would be, yes, it still come true. And so. Please, Christians, my brothers and sisters, or you do not yet believe in God, and I surely pray for you that you would come to your realization under the power of the Holy Spirit one day that you see Jesus Christ as the Son of God, that He saved you from your sins and death, that His word does come true. His word is really the firm promise in all eternity that it will come true in your life, whether you like it or not. By the way. If you continue to sin against God, His word will still come true. Did you not read the John, the Gospel of John, chapter three, from verse sixteen to verse twenty-one? Okay, not just verse sixteen, but verse sixteen to verse—I believe it's verse twenty-one. Yes. All right. So, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. That would be the usual verse that you listen to, right? But then, continue on, verse seventeen. 
For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict: Light has come into the world, but man loved darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light. And will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. All right. So that would be the longer version. All right. Even if you don't like it, the truth is the truth. It will come true, and it already says the truth unto you that well. Please come to the light. Please don't be ashamed of what we have done wrong in the past. Please come to the realization that we need God in our lives so that we find life itself again. And so, for Christians, brothers and sisters, this is the perfect instructions for you to train daily, daily. All right, on a daily basis. All right, that how you should live a holy life in front of God. Just like Joseph, just like all the biblical character that you admire in the Bible, they live abide to the same teaching from the same God, and so this will be it. This will be it. Oh, if you are not sure about the third challenge, the third challenge will be whether you continue to walk in the promise of God in all your decisions in your life or not. And so, three challenges from this seven verses that I gave unto you. All right, please have them in your daily lives. Ch continue challenging yourself with all this, and eventually you will see that hey, I'm living a holy life in front of God, not because of who I am, but because what God empowered me to do so in faith, and that's it. And so I really hope that this part of the scripture will kind of、uh, act as a、uh, supplemental scripture unto your daily walk with God, so that it answer your question: How did Joseph do it? Right. Well, follow this part of the scripture, and hopefully you will do the same thing as Joseph did once before. And continue on until the day that you see our God Jesus Christ. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. Thank you for today. Thank you for this time. And I pray that you will help us to understand how to live a holy life in front of you, based on this part of the Scripture, and help us to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to continue following you until the end of the world. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.